Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. Is there anything more satisfying than pulling off the perfect no-scope headshot? No, there isn't. But have you ever stopped to think about what's happening to those poor, helpless bots you're mowing down on the battlefields of the future? Or do you find it odd that enemies in Fallout 4 can take so many bullets to the brain without breaking a sweat? Would you be able to survive even a single shot to the head? Let's take a look at what's happening the moment a bullet bursts its way into your cranium. Think of it this way. It's a rock, paper, scissors game between your head and a bullet, and your head always chooses scissors, but the bullet comes in like a rock. In other words, it's no contest. Once the bullet's inside your head, it flies through tissues and membranes and enters your cerebrospinal fluid. That stuff is part of a system that acts like a cushion for your incredibly fragile gray matter and allows you to do crazy things like bungee jumping and drag racing without brutalizing your brain. It, much like everything else in your body, is no match for that small piece of metal. Your brain tissues stretch past their breaking point as the bullet passes through them, but it moves so fast that those tissues don't actually break until after the bullet has left your noggin. The force creates a tunnel of damage ten times the size of the gun barrel that fired it. All the things that make you you are gone in an instant. In fact, if you're ever unfortunate enough to be in the sights of Solid Snake or Call of Duty main character, whatever his name is, you won't even know what hit you. The part of your brain that allows you to think logically about what just happened, the prefrontal cortex, is toast. Your hippocampus, the thing that lets you create and store memories, it's obliterated. Well, at least you won't remember your grisly death, and that's a plus. It's important to look on the bright side. So maybe games like The Division and Fallout 4 don't present the most realistic take on headshots, but on the other hand, Sniper Elite 3 is a game that revels in the mayhem caused by a single bullet to your fragile meat sack. It slows things way down and goes all x-ray vision, giving you a front row seat to the goriest display outside of a Mortal Kombat fatality. It's a brain surgeon's dream or nightmare, I guess. Thanks to its slow-mo mind blow, Sniper Elite 3 does a great job of presenting the fateful meeting between a head and a bullet in a realistic way, more so than a lot of other games today. Now, that all looks and sounds incredibly traumatic, and you're probably thinking, Julian, why are you being such a bummer? You're telling me there's no hope at all? Well, not entirely. While I wouldn't bet on you surviving a cap to the head any more than I'd bet on Duke Nukem starring in a critically acclaimed game, it is possible to survive a headshot. Mostly, it depends on where in the head the shot occurs. Trajectory plays a big role here. If the bullet goes in and out smoothly, there's less opportunity for collateral damage than if it decides to ricochet inside your head like a six-year-old in a bounce house. The tissue damage multiplies in the latter case, and you're looking at a one-way ticket to Deadsville. As the brain is divided into two hemispheres with four different lobes each, your chance of survival increases if the damage is isolated to just one of them. But let's be honest, the odds are small. A headshot means around a 90% probability of death. I wouldn't even bet against those odds in chocobo racing. I suggest you play it safe and keep your headshots in video games where they belong. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're into science and video games, we're here to educate, inform, and entertain. Click here to subscribe, and be sure to check back every week for more insights into the hard facts behind the cool stuff in all your favorite games. If you have any suggestions, drop us a comment below, and don't forget to keep on playing.